Hey guys, welcome to the video. In today's video, we're going to talk about five tips to paying off your car loan faster. Let's get started. All right, guys, welcome to the video. So today we wanted to go over something that um, is pretty common in America and really across the world. So car loans, what are they? Well, when you buy a car and it's new or pre-owned, Sometimes you may not have all the cash to be able to get the car, so you may have to get financing. Recently, I have purchased a new truck, and I've gotten a pre-owned um, 2022 Ridgeline. So, um, my other Ridgeline is starting to get at that age where it's starting to kind of go down. Um, I'm noticing a lot more serious repairs, and it's only going to get worse. So, rather than being caught off guard and unprepared, I like to um, get a new car and, you know be ready so all of that is great and um, but here's the problem the problem is I'm financing about thirty thousand dollars in financing I put ten thousand down so I got um, a little chunk of change to pay off and um, I really like this website because it goes through and tells you um, hey you got a car loan here's how you can pay it off faster so the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna go down to number one and it says, consider refinancing your current car loan. If your car loan came with a high interest rate, like mine did, it was 14%, then you could look for better terms and a lower payment, especially if your credit score has increased since you applied for the original loan. Now, that may hopefully happen with us because I'll link all the payments that I'm doing every month to Experian, and hopefully that will boost my score um, back to a better rate because right now, for some reason, that's 644. I thought it was at 700, but I guess it was going down. So hopefully this gets our score going up, and then we can refinance um, because that would definitely lower our payment. The next thing we're going to do is make biweekly payments. So I have a little example here. It says a $500 monthly payment made for 12 months adds up to 6,000 per year. 500 times 12, that's 6k. But a 250 biweekly payment made 26 times comes out to 6,500 per year. So it's an extra 500. So with us, we get paid bi-weekly as well, and I'm gonna be throwing pretty much everything at this debt. I do not like being in debt. I don't wanna owe anything on a truck, um, nothing. If it's a house that's different, and that can work out by renting it out, so that you're having some of that burden of the mortgage getting cut down from renting the home out. But car loan, um, no, wanna definitely take care of that as fast as possible. So, number three, round up your car loan payments. If you round up the payment to 250, you'll pay the loan off 13 months earlier and save at least 395 in interest. So it says, for example, 13,000 at 5% interest for 72 months, your monthly payment is 209. On a regular payment schedule, you'll pay 2,074 interest over the life of the loan. Okay, another way to slightly increase your payment schedule is to round up your payment to the nearest $50. So that's cool. Okay, we'll do that. Um, number four, review add-ons. Guys, this is something that they love to get you with. They got me with it because this first car I've ever actually bought on my own, um, the other one was passed down in the family. So the things that I got added on was these like warranties, MPP and the club and the platinum you know, thing. And that added an extra $5,000 to my debt. So I will definitely be reviewing that and looking to cut all of that out so I can get that debt down and then pay this sucker off as fast as possible. Because say a month takes you to pay off just that um, coverage and all of these add-ons, well then you're not, you're not actually paying off the, the loan, right? You're just paying off the extra stuff they want to throw at you. And they love that because they're getting that interest money. They can drag it out as long as possible. Their goal is to keep you... Um, locked in on that loan for as long as possible while collecting that interest for as long as they can and then um, they go from there. So our goal is to get that paid off as quickly as possible so that um, we're not losing money on a liability. So number five, find extra money. That's definitely going to help you put extra money toward your debt uh, if you come with any extra cash. So for me, if I do any leases or renewals, I will definitely be funneling that straight to this um, snowball or avalanche method. 
So the snowball method is you make extra payments towards your smallest debt until it's paid off, then apply the new money you're putting towards that debt, towards your largest um, debt. And that's true. Your snowball payments could be like paying off some credit cards first and then targeting that main one. For me personally, I like to um, go straight to the big one. And um, But I guess today we did kind of a snowball method. We took we found a credit card that had a balance of 174 We paid that off. And then now we can solely focus on this. So uh, another one is utilize tax refunds, bonuses, and pay raises. Um, here's another tip right here. The key to success with either method is to keep up until your debt is paid off and resist taking on new debt during this period. So an issue that a lot of people do is um, that we hear at the office is some people will try to get a house, they'll get a pre-approved and they'll get to like actually get the home or close to it um, or right before they get it and they go ahead and try to go buy a new car. And that just messes up their whole DTI which is your debt to income ratio and then oftentimes it messes up the whole transaction and they don't get the house, but they did get the new car. So, you know, I guess pick what you want. So for us, that would be an example like, say I want to go, oh, I want to go buy a ground bike. I want to go buy a motorcycle. Well, that would be pretty dumb because if that got me in more debt, I just added onto my pile. And that's how a lot of people um, in America get in such bad debt is it's just one thing after another. It's a house, and then it's a car, then, oh, my wife needs a car, and then, oh, I need to get a dirt bike, I want to get an ATV. I mean, whatever it is, you know, there's certain things you need. Um, technically, this truck, I don't really technically need it. It was just a more of a preparation thing if the other one goes additional income, rent out a room in your house, do yard work. We can definitely start doing some yard work, sell items. That would probably help. Um, house sit or pet sit, take on temporary side gigs like doing ride sharing service or restaurant work, apply for a new job, talk to your boss about a pay increase. So all of that is good. We'll probably do some more landscaping jobs to um, keep ourselves busy and get this thing paid off quick. The other thing that a lot of people overlook is you may not need to make more money, but you can definitely learn to reduce extra expenses. So one expense for me that is a problem is coffee. I like to go buy coffee. Um, like to get lattes every day and I mean that is just money just flying out the window So I think a latte every day is about 130 a week So unless I'm not trading that good on KuCoin, then I really can't afford that. So We're definitely gonna work on cutting out coffee down um, And then also eating out um, At restaurants, so no more first watch also first watch is expensive. It's like $15 now um, so if we can really just go super super cheap for the next couple months then we should be able to knock this thing out within um, five to seven months so and that's without trading in the old truck if I did trade it in or sell it um, that would definitely knock this loan down faster and we may do that but as of now it's still a good car and I really just don't like giving up my cars like that it just they just man they're right in the heart so that's pretty good um, and here's what it says. Well, if you're not sure where to start, take a look at your most recent bank and credit card statements and make note of each expense you can cancel, reduce, or eliminate. So any um, expenses that you can cut out, um, I think one of the ones I had, I had a car wash uh, membership for 40 a month. Dude, that's kind of a lot. And we cut that down to 15 a month. So we have that. We have QuickBooks, that's 15, so that's 30. And then um, we pay our phone bill and our insurance all at all at uh, once. So for my phone and insurance, I like to pay that annually. Um, but that's for the other truck. This one is pretty high. So um, if you're like me and you're 20 and you're you're still pretty young, you're not past 25, then you may consider talking to um, a guardian or your parents or somebody that's older that can get insurance in the policy in their name and then they just add you as a driver. So it definitely will knock the insurance payment down because for me to get insurance every month, my insurance payment is like $5.95. And that, guys, is ridiculous. I mean, that's just ridiculously high. But rather than complaining, hey, that's high, well, let's find a solution to um, getting a better insurance payment because we really don't need to be paying that much because if you factor in my car payment, I think it's like 700 plus insurance, that's over a grand. It's over almost like half my income. It's just going to a vehicle. So 
as you can see, we're going to lower the insurance and then we're going to target the debt. We're going to cut out all the add-ons, hopefully get this back down to 30000 financed and then um, pay this sucker off um, as quickly as we can because being in debt is not um, a great thing. You may Now, I do want to clarify, though, there is two different types of debt, right? There's good debt and there is bad debt. This is the kind of debt that's bad. It's not debt that's making me money. If it was a house, it was real estate property, and I'm in debt, but it's rented out, it's cash flowing, and it's bringing me income, well, then that's a good debt. So that's fine. But this is not. It's a truck. It's a liability. Um, maybe it will appreciate because things will get tighter and stuff. Um, it's crazy. My um, boss at my job, he bought a Silverado last year, and it's actually worth more in value um, today um, even though he's put a lot of miles on it, and that's because inflation's gotten worse. Prices of autos and cars have gone up um, exponentially. So, if you guys like this video, please leave a comment, like, and definitely subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you on the next one.